Welcome to the JBoss EAP7 on OpenShift screencast. In this screencast, we'll quickly introduce both JBoss EAP7 and OpenShift, Red Hat's hybrid cloud container platform. Next, we'll show you how to use OpenShift EAP and Red Hat's developer tools to quickly and easily develop and deploy to OpenShift. Finally, we'll close with a brief discussion on some advanced topics you can explore on your own, along with some helpful pointers to additional resources. Let's get started. JBoss EAP7 is an open-source Java EE7 platform which has been designed for both traditional Java EE apps and newer web-scale microservices. Its lightweight footprint and blazingly fast startup time minimizes hardware resources and makes it perfect for cloud and container-based deployments. JBoss Developer Studio features enhanced JavaScript tooling support, live reloading, and support for container-based app development right from the IDE. Combining these features with the proven reliability and stability of the underlying platform makes EAP a great choice for your business. Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform is a hybrid cloud platform supporting both traditional and cloud-native apps. Combining EAP and OpenShift lets you control and automate all aspects of app development and gives you powerful deployment tools to continuously refine, deliver, and scale bits in production across a wide range of supported cloud infrastructure. JBoss middleware services are also natively available on OpenShift, letting you focus on business value while Red Hat takes care of the infrastructure. Let's see how these two work together. In this example, we'll head over to the EAP7 Quick Starts collection and deploy the Kitchen Sink app, which uses several Java EE technologies to showcase EAP7 in action. I've already deployed OpenShift, so we'll navigate to the web console and log in as administrator. I'll create a new OpenShift project to contain my app and its configuration and allow my teammates to collaborate on the project in the future. I'll give the project a name and basic description and then choose from the many application types that OpenShift supports. We'll choose a basic EAP7 template which uses the source to image technology to build and create a container image for my app. I've created a fork of this quick start so I can make changes later, so I'll specify its name and location and leave the rest of the values as is. Once created, OpenShift will spawn a number of objects into the system that control the build and deployment of my app. Coming back to the overview page for my project, you can see several objects are already created. Let's take a look at the log file when the app is building. It takes a while to build this app, so I'll fast forward to the end. Once the build is finished, OpenShift creates a container image and pushes it to my local Docker repository for use during deployment. Once the build completes, OpenShift deploys the image to an available pod and I can access the endpoint for my app by clicking on the host name. And I can see my app in action and ready to go. Back on the overview, I can see and edit many of the different kinds of objects OpenShift created to control my app. Browsing builds shows my app's build history, showing my build took just over three minutes, most of which was spent downloading dependencies for my app. I'm going to edit my build by clicking Actions, Edit, and adding a new environment variable called Maven Mirror URL, which points to a local Nexus repository I've set up in a separate OpenShift project. This environment variable is read by the EAP build process and is used to save local copies of dependencies. I'll go ahead and kick off one or two more builds and see what the results are. In a real scenario, this build could be run every hour or more, so once dependencies are cached, we should see a drastically faster build. And indeed, after a few cycles, my builds now take 40 seconds instead of the 3 minutes, and I'm much happier. My new build is now deployed in production, and browsing pods shows me the underlying Kubernetes pod cluster with my app running on one of them. OpenShift makes it super simple to scale this app to meet any changing demand by simply clicking on the controls to deploy multiple replicas of my app, letting OpenShift automatically load balance incoming requests across them. And I can still access the app using the endpoint, or route, created by OpenShift when I created the project. JBoss Developer Studio works in tandem with OpenShift to bring all of its features directly into the IDE environment. After configuring my OpenShift instance in the IDE, I navigate to the OpenShift Explorer and can see my running app deployed to pods within OpenShift.
Using the Explorer, I can right click and choose Import to bring my already created app into the IDE with just a few clicks, making it possible for me as a developer to make changes to the app and deploy directly into production or into a more advanced DevOps workflow in the future. Let's make some changes to the app and see what the basic development workflow looks like. I'll choose a convenient file to edit, in this case the main HTML page for the app, so we can easily see the effects. A quick change to give a shout out to Bob and Evan and I'm ready to submit. I right click on the project and choose Team Commit to commit and push this change to the Git repository. In the background, OpenShift is notified of this incoming change via a GitHub webhook and starts a rebuild of my project. Once the now supercharged build completes, you can see that OpenShift deploys new replicas across the cluster with the changed code, while simultaneously shutting down the previous pods running the original code, which reduces and sometimes eliminates downtime. Like me, most developers occasionally make mistakes, so there are additional techniques you can use with OpenShift, such as blue-green or canary deployments, which can help reduce the effects of bad coding. My new changes are now deployed and I can see them by revisiting the app. In this screencast, you learn how to create and deploy apps to JBoss EAP7 running on OpenShift. This works fine for smaller projects, but as projects grow, so does the need to employ advanced features. For example, stateful apps need additional application logic to understand and communicate with other running copies in the cluster, perhaps for session replication or distributed transactions against the database. In addition, OpenShift uses ephemeral Docker containers for deployments, so to persist data across pod restarts, a persistent volume can be employed within OpenShift to store app data. Reusable templates like the one we used in this screencast can be created for your own custom apps, making it easy to reuse different app components in your environment. OpenShift and EAP are a natural fit for microservice-style app development, and there's a lot of research available at developers.redhat.com on the most effective way of building and converting existing apps to use this style. Finally, besides EAP, many of Red Hat's JBoss middleware products are also available as containerized XPath images for use with OpenShift, such as ActiveMQ, the BRMS Decision Server, JBoss DataGrid, Red Hat Single Sign-On, and more. For details on these and other advanced topics, be sure to visit developers.redhat.com where you'll also find community forums. Documentation for all of Red Hat's products are at docs.redhat.com, and subscribers can access a wealth of knowledge from Red Hat's knowledge base. I hope you enjoyed the screencast, and we'll see you next time.